because as global warming melts the Arctic, it, the con- control of Greenland will open up new shipping lanes. And he said this will be like a new Panama Canal. To ship what? Where? Well, just, you know, all the stuff we need. What stuff? Oh, more oil. There's not going to be anything. Yeah, the troops. There's not going to be any fucking trade. What are you trading? The fucking biome is going to collapse. Dude, people still need stuff. They they won't get it. They're just going to (laughs) die. Calm down, Matt. The fucking Amazon is on fire. This guy's present. Yeah, this (laughs) sucks, man. This shit sucks. I'm not going to, yeah, I'm not going to lie. This feels pretty bad. Feels like, bad, dude. Yeah. That shipping, I've, I've heard a bunch of that like, for years now. All that shipping lane stuff, hey, that's the bright side. That's not only psych, it's like it's one thing to be just a psycho. And you, I don't care who many dies. But you're beyond not caring about other people. You've also created an alternate reality that you're living in. You're not even, you're not even taking your soullessness to apply it to the real world. You're applying it to a fantasy realm where you're still going to have all these profitable fucking trade routes in a world where half the arable land is turned into fucking desert. Yeah, it's the climate holocaust version of Marge Simpson making her own Pepsi for the home prom. <laughs> it feels really bad, dude. It's it's bad for my vibe boom. Yeah, I'm not feeling the vibe right now. I feel <laughs> the opposite. I'm, I'm like not shit. vibing. I'm uh, not thuming. I'm not vibing. <laughs> I'm, I'm not goaded on the sticks at all. Yeah, I'm botting out. What is okay? Tell me what that is. I Bob, that a bot is. is like a bad player, right? Yeah, I get that. So they like, play like a yeah, robot. Bo- yeah. yeah, botting out is like you just play terribly. Okay, so you're playing like you're a having a bad player. day of games. A very bad game, there, folks. He was botting, botting out. out. He's botting out like a dog. He would think it, Trump's growl. He would say the gamer words like so well. He's cracked. He's cracked, folks. He's goaded. So he's he's low-key goaded on the sticks. One of the most goaded young men. He's a, such a goaded young man, and we love him. <laughs> uh, back again. A uh, quick shout-out. Uh, thank you to the uh, woman on the train for recommending local favorite uh, Fellini's Pizzeria in Providence. But mostly thank you for us. I give it eight and a half stars. Mostly thank you for uh, sitting next to us for near three hours listening to us rave and rant vulgarly and nearly incoherently just about people we follow on Twitter we think are liars. Here's a hint. It's all if you're like if we follow you and you're nervous hearing this, it's you. It's 100 percent you. It's all of you. But yeah, like basically overheard a three hour Chapo episode that's, uh, you know, the raw uncut dope and thought. I'd like to help these young men uh, get a meal in Providence. Yeah, it's like, and not like I'd like to call a social worker or the police right now. <laughs> yeah, like literally every time I like taking the tra- trains, like my favorite way to travel. Oh, it's like, the best. Like a significant distance. It's the best. Even though it takes longer, it really it actually doesn't take that much longer because, I mean, you have to account for travel time to the airport getting there early, et cetera, et cetera. Security. Yeah. Also, like, airplanes are poison. They're bad for you. Everyone who yelled at the Wright brothers was correct. <laughs> the, well, name one way the world has gotten better since airplanes. There's zero. Carbon footprint, very bad. Yeah, Close awful. Beloved, Not... lovely, clean trains. So, like, I, yeah, we love trains, but, like, yeah, every time we're on them, you get to, like, sit with your friends in a way you really don't on an airplane, unless you're in uh, first class. But uh, even then... Not really, but well, you uh, only like you know, there, there's no, there's no two, there's no two rows of seats in first class that are like facing each right, other. Right, exactly. So like every train ride we've ever taken, we're just like sitting in the like things facing each other, and yeah, for like three to six hours, however long it is, you're just like the entire time, just like, yo, we what what if, what if fucking what if Donald Trump like he tried to put a condom on and it like went up his fucking urethra? <laughs> <laughs> what if his like sons try to take it out? <laughs> and like I always like I always like on the Acela I really don't give a shit because like if you're if you're in like business class you can just assume the people around you are like lobbyists or fucking whatever maybe they work for like one of the three good nonprofits I don't know probably not but like we were this is just a normal trip to Rhode Island so I assume this woman was like a physical therapist which is seems to be like the main job in Rhode Island I'm assuming I don't know why <laughs> just. One of my assumptions that feels correct, and I'm excited for to ask at the show if anyone's a physical therapist, and for literally the entire crowd to cheer. But uh, she heard that. The thing that caused everyone in the UK to just, like, 
aggressively not look at us. The every other train just the annoyed people. She like would cut into the conversation, not like in an annoying way. Like she would contribute here and there, and she told us where to get pizza. So she either like enjoyed it or thought we were like just young men in need of immense guidance. Guidance, yes, yeah. a guiding hand. And yeah, you know, it's just like hearing us expound upon totally obscure Twitter characters that I'm not even going to mention on yeah, the show. You don't even get because to hear like about you don't them. Need, like this. This is too premium. I don't want to un- unleash the the hounds or hogs. I don't want to blow these people up. Just like all of the, the the true gems, the true the true uh yeah the gemstones, if you will. If the you're private a private reserve, yeah. If you're a rich investor and you and your friends want to pay like two hundred fifty thousand dollars for an episode, we will come to your your house and do an episode about like a specific you know one or two very obscure people on Twitter that we we privately make fun of. So but, yeah, shout, shout out to out, that woman, yeah. uh, helpful on trains. Okay, back to uh, back to the dipstick. Uh, we are, I don't know. I think we we haven't cracked the frontal lobe yet, but we're you know we're drilling in deep here. Uh, we've done Greenland. Uh, what's next on the agenda? Oh right, uh, Trump saying that uh, he's king of all Jews. Like, I, I love that character from the old early Howard Stern shows from the call in <laughs> king of all Jews. Uh, Trump said, uh, "What was it? Uh, you know, he was quoting the uh, talk radio host and you know right wing." Uh, Get about uh, Wayne Allen Root, which Wayne is the Allen most Root. serial killer sounding name Absolutely. I have heard outside of John Wayne Gacy. People need to check his crawl space immediately. Wayne Allen Root, serial killer a, ass name. A, a you know, he's a long time. He's like I, like a, a, a sort of wannabe Wall Street guy with an enormous mouth and a really stupid face, uh, who said that uh, he was quoting Wayne Allen. Trump was quoting Wayne Allen Root, calling him uh, the King of Israel and basically the Second Coming. And or then he said Jews who are American Jews who are still Democrats and still voting for the Democratic Party are either misinformed or, quote, very disloyal. (laughs) And he was asked to to whom are they being disloyal? You know, because of obviously uh, Ilan Omar and AOC, Rashida Tlaib, who he's, you know, him and again, all the all of the other smart conservatives who supposedly hate him believe, of course, exactly the same thing that, you know, the, oh, this is horrible anti-Semitism and, you know, BDS, et cetera, et cetera. That's the, you know, the, you know, a, a new shine on the oldest, uh, you know, prejudice there is anti-Semitism. So he said that and he was asked to clarify uh, to whom are these American Jews who vote for the Democratic Party being disloyal to. And he said uh, Israel, which That's I love about so that is that great. he is blown right through the anti-Semitic trope of Jews having dual loyalty yep. and just made it w- one loyalty. There's single loyalty. Single two loyalty. Israel. <laughs> two, two countries, one loyalty. <laughs> and uh, it's so great because the dual loyalty thing is supposed to be a horrible anti-Semitism. To even suggest that some American Jew would feel a loyalty to Israel that might conflict with their loyalty to the United States and Trump just goes, yeah, no, they're only loyal to Israel. That's the only thing they should be loyal to. Because, and there's a lot of people who speculated this, and I'm 100% certain that it's true, he thinks that every Jew in America is an Israeli citizen. Which technically they could be, they could activate that citizenship, but they haven't, many of them, most of them. But in his head, they all are. They're all Israelis, and it's their country. And they're being very disloyal to the, to the, to the great man who runs it. Beautiful... Beautiful Netanyahu, he's great. Ben, Benjamin Netanyahu, we love him. So, I mean, you know the usual. So, I mean, we've talked about people, these people before on the show, the the trope police, right? Oh yeah. Uh, you know, they keep having to find ways to deal with Trump saying insane and actually anti-Semitic things about Jewish people. Uh, you know, largely to play up to his not at all Jewish psycho evangelical base. I mean, because that's who he's talking to. Oh, of course. Whenever he talks about Israel, yeah. Or you know, Armageddon, or you know, bringing about the apocalypse. He's not speaking to, you know, my, the zip code I grew up in. That <laughs> no, one. it's the people who imagine that all the Jews are going to be killed in a cleansing fire, and then it's just going to be a giant water park that they get to go to, and there's no lines. Uh, I, do, so I, like, do like, I do like how he sort of, like, makes it unnecessary to have, like, sort of this squishy liberal Zionism. Because yeah. it, it just makes it, it makes it all, like, very clear. All the, like, they they have tried the thing of, like, 
it's calling Ilan Omar anti-Semitic and uh, all this shit. And it seems like this is a recurring theme where they give him like an established Republican Party thing of like, yeah, if you like mention the word Palestine at all, you're you're just you're plotting another Holocaust or you're going to cause it to happen. No, I mean, like best. they have made BDS. They have tried desperately to make BDS synonymous with the, you know, the crudest and nastiest forms of anti-Semitism, which are now begun to, you know, sprout like fucking mushrooms on the right, you know, basically open anti-Semitism. Uh, they're, they're, they've tried as hard as possible to make that synonymous with uh, BDS and Ilan Omar and Rashida Tlaib. Yeah, but this is so this is a recurring recurring Trump theme where, yeah, they give him that existing Republican Party script and he tries it for a while, you know, with his own spin on things. And then after a while, he's like, eh, fuck it. And he's like, <laughs> if you're a Jew, you have to be loyal to your country of Israel. <laughs> and it's cool because it's like, Maybe the forward will finally fucking go out of business. God, I hope so. But the trope police, though, have you know they they have to come up with new and creative ways to try to like address this, right? And the way that they're doing it is they're just like, I'm just so tired. I'm so tired of of Jews being used as a political football. We're battened on both sides. On the one side, we have you know our insane president who uh, is, you know, like an actual enemy of the Jewish people and, uh, you know, Ilan Omar on the other side. Real fucking hard choice you got there to make. (laughs) So they have to make Ilan Omar and Rashida Tlaib seem like the bloodthirsty anti-Semites who actually populate the right wing in this country and make it seem like it's actually there's nothing harder in the world right now to be, you know, a Jew in America who's in the media and has to comment on this. Oh, my God. It's that is so exhausting. No one has it harder. It's amazing the struggles people can overcome. <laughs> I mean, I, you know, I don't even know how I got in. But uh, this is one of those things where it's like, yeah, no, nah, I, don't, I, don't, I don't think that, like, we're going to get rid of, like, Zionism as, like, an unbreakable totem in the public space, like, overnight. But, you know, one thing one thing that may help is if you can't do the the Wonder Woman, the Pride Parade in Tel Aviv, the all all the trite, you know, shit that Peter Beinart used to do, that's gone. I don't think you can really do that with a straight face anymore. I mean, Peter and I know, Beinart I don't think, isn't even doing it with a straight right, face. Right, exa- exactly. It's gone. There are a few freaks here and there who try to, I mean, we read w- one of their poetry, <laughs> their, mm. their poems, who try to do, like, the extreme sort of, uh, identitarian, identitarian, sort of liberal Zionism that is his long dead. But now, like after Trump, this is going to be the only kind that's left. You, you're going to be Yair Netanyahu posting fucking Kahane Groypers and, <laughs> and, and, you know, some fucking pig faced evangelical strumming acoustic guitar. And that'll be the only kind left. And, no ideology deserves that fate than more more than Zionism. So, yeah, hopefully, well, hopefully that's the case. Well, I mean, because like they, you know, they have to make it. They have to be like, you know, Trump is awful, and you know, he's made terrible racist attacks on these congresswomen, who, you know, and then, and then they turn around and say, but who have also made terrible racist attacks against the Jewish people themselves. And my question for these people is, okay, uh, if you're willing, like, you know, in 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 your ideological zone that you're policing to uh, give up the ghost on, you know, Trump and the vast majority of the Republican Party being, you know, insane racists and anti-Semites. What do you make of Benjamin Netanyahu and his government? 